Good evening, friendos. It's time for Infinity Drive for Life Round 3. Been looking forward to this, well, ever since Round 2 back on Wednesday. Um, because this was originally slated to be the final day uh, of the event. Um, but we met some extension conditions, so we've got a fourth round coming up next Monday, uh, 24th of August at 7 p.m. CDT. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Infinity Drive for Life. It's a multi-day charity stream to benefit Extra Life which benefits Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, and in this event's case, it'll be benefiting Children's Wisconsin, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, for their COVID-19 impact fund. COVID-19, obviously, a very serious pandemic still raging across the world, in particular in the U.S., for you know, really silly reasons, honestly. But we've raised $190 so far, which is great, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for your generosity. Let's get that total up a little bit. Because every dollar of donations adds one point to our event extension counter. We are currently at 435 points out of 500 needed to unlock round five for next Wednesday. I believe we can get there. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident we'll get there, uh, regardless of what else happens. Um, but, you know, it, it would always be nice to see even more donations to, to push us even closer there. So how about we get on that? But for tonight, we've got the final set of three androids. Uh, the, the three of the nine that we have not yet played uh, throughout the event. And tonight we'll be starting with... Shiitake. <laughs> uh, we'll be starting with Shiitake. Um, not my most favorite android uh, to play with. Let's get the window dressing set, though. Um, we are, of course, wearing the appropriate colors. we got this nice uh, Shiitake shirt on. So we're ready to go in that respect. And oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, shiitake, huh? All right, I, I guess I guess we kind of got to do it, don't we? We said we would do it. We kind of got to do it. So, um, I don't know. Let's go, I guess. Oh, wait, I totally forgot to bring these up last time. So I, I promised myself I'd remember this time. Uh, the two prizes. The two prizes up for grabs. These are extremely limited edition, by which I mean they're no longer in, in, in print and production or whatever. Uh, physical Switch copies of Salt Android Cactus Pruss, uh, produced by Super Rare Games. Got the, uh, the, uh, just the normal, normal Switch box, uh, color manual and the Switch cart inside, of course. All brand new, uh, fully flavored, etc. And also, I don't know if this is gonna show up, it also comes with a, a pack-in set of trading cards and a nice Super Rare sticker on the inside there. So these two, these two beauties, these two bad boys, um, our prizes for our results guessing contest that's going on presently. Um, submissions are closed for tonight's runs. Uh, you missed the cutoff at 7 p.m. CDT. Unfortunate, but that's all right. You got plenty of time to get in for next round on Monday and probably the round after that on Wednesday. Uh, Play.infinitydrive4.life. You can see the link on the bottom. If you'd like to go ahead and make a donation, donate.infinitydrive4.life. Another link on the bottom. Otherwise, there's also a Twitch extension panel uh, below the stream. If you are watching on web, desktop, Twitch, or whatever they call it now, I'm not sure if it works in mobile. I haven't really tested it, but uh, uh, you know, give it a try if you're if you're feeling lucky and/or generous. All right, that's oopsie again. Not doing one player two controller here. Uh, that's enough of my jawing for now. We got plenty of jawing to do as we start the first run of the evening. <sighs> Let's go with Shiitake. <laughs> okay. 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 So. So, 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 we went from round two this past Wednesday to round three today from playing the two most favoritest androids for me to play to uh, two of the least favoritest androids for me to play, starting with Shiitake, of course. Um, and, and it's not because Shiitake is bad, by, by no means. No, 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 no. Shiitake is actually quite good. Um, I'm just not very good at, at playing her, so um, we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. Uh, Shiitake, like everyone else, has her own unique weapon set. The primary is a... A nice, punchy railgun. Um, the only weapon in the game to have infinite damage potential uh, for, for two reasons. One, it has infinite range. It goes all the way across the level until it hits something solid, like a wall. Um, it does... Uh, the Well, its damage is not reduced, uh, no matter how many enemies it happens to sky through. And it penetrates all enemies on its way across the level. So, in theory... It could do maximum amounts of damage to a full lineup of enemies. Um, so it does have the highest DPS in very certain circumstances. Um, but, you know, that very rarely happens anyways. 
Her secondary are these uh, neat little propeller pro proximity mines. Extremely potent. Uh, they have a higher damage radius than even the uh, Lemon's rockets that we saw on Wednesday night. It also makes her uh, Vespi ball strat that we saw uh, performed with Lemon on Wednesday night a little bit easier as well. So once we hit layer 15, that will be the thing we do. That will definitely be the thing we do. Well, we got lots of layers between us and uh, layer 15, so let's just keep going here. Because of the nature of Shiitake's weapons, you might see me uh, favor accelerates a little bit more than usual. Um, just because I would like to be able to line up my shots a little bit better. And sometimes, porking around without an accelerate is a bit too slow for us. I'm still going to be maintaining uh, firepower as much as I can, though, just for the added DPS. Um, it just makes a lot of sense, just as a general strategy. But anyway, besides Shitake being not uh, my most favoritist to play, just because it's... I'm not extremely experienced with her. Uh, she's just kind of difficult in general. Um, her weapon set is pretty technical. Um, it does have uh, quite a few benefits to it, though. She can erase wasp cans like no one else. Um, we'll see maybe some of those strategies put into play as soon as we get some wasp cans on the screen. That's actually really fun. Um, like we did with Lemon on Wednesday, what we'll end up doing is running straight into the wasp cans without shooting at them, uh, letting them pop open on their own, and then laying a mine and just absolutely obliterating the contents as they come out. It looks really super cool. In fact, the uh, explosive radius on the propeller mines is so big that you can even eliminate two or three wasp cans at a time. Oh, we're gonna drop chain right there because uh, I kind of muffed up a few of my shots. That's all right, though. See, look at that damage radius on those mines. Incredible. Incredible. We're gonna have to make uh, make good use of that. Because of how slow Itake's primary is, you really gotta make sure you land each and every shot. Otherwise, you're liable to drop chain. So it's really... Very much a game of positioning, more than any other Android, really. Um, perhaps even rivaling the next one we'll be playing tonight with Coral. Um, but definitely got to pay attention to positioning, definitely got to pay attention to our own movement, and definitely corralling the enemies as best as we can. Um, despite Shitake's range, like literally infinite range with the Railgun primary, um, sometimes you can't quite eyeball a shot when enemies are off the screen. So you either got to pray, or have exceedingly good aim, or, you know, just uh, corral them in such a way that you're not dealing with them off the screen very often. Okay, so there's layer 5 down, no problem. Uh, sometimes it's a bit hard to deal with mine phases of Shiitake, just because of the uh, slowness of her primary weapon, but we made it through that one okay. We're going to be dealing with a bunch of mines later on here in layer 6 as well, so we'll probably try to keep an accelerate going to make that a little bit easier. Now, because of how surging works, uh, you may recall us talking about surging uh, pretty extensively in round one and a little bit of a recap in round two. Um, Shiitake is exceedingly good at it. Because of the damage output of her primary and secondary alike, she is quite liable to destroy two or more enemies at once. So she gets surges all the time. A quick recap on what surging is. Um, oops, I totally whipped that. Nice. Uh, it's, a, it's a scoring method in which uh, every time you destroy two or more enemies in very quick succession, I believe it's like maybe a tenth of a second or a couple frames or something like that, you get a 1.5 times score multiplier added to your <coughs> chain score multiplier at the top left there. So if we have a chain multiplier of times 10, and we get a surge of the extra 1.5 times on top of that, it ends up being a score multiplier of times 15, applied to the base score of the enemy that's all the enemies that are involved in the surge. So with Shiitake's surging pretty much all the time, um, that ends up making her a, a, a pretty good scoring android. One of the best, in fact. Not just pretty good. 
and you can just see, with these boss fights, you can just see the absurd amount of damage that Shiitake's weapons do. Even a single shot of her railgun knocks like 20% off of one of Embryo's phases here. Not quite 20%, but pretty close. Even without the theoretically infinite DPS of a single railgun shot, shot per shot, it's one of the highest damage dealers in the game. Perhaps maybe outstripped by a single shot of a single full charge of Licorice Slash. But given its range and 100% penetrating power, um, in theory, of course, it has the highest weapon DPS of all. So good, in fact, that you can nearly one-shot every larger standard enemy. Um, you can nearly one-shot a big red Buster Titan. Uh, you do a little bit less to the other two types of Titans, the White Bomber Titan and the Blue Buster Titan. You one-shot normal white turrets, nearly one-shot red laser turrets, and do a little bit less to blue laser turrets. Spectres and Banshees, the, the two ghost-like enemies, are, are both extremely one-shot by even not even a, a level 3 railgun shot. All the tinier enemies, like uh, blue and white Fidos, white and green kegs, wasps, of course, are all one-shot by not even the level 3 railgun. Jumbo Fidos take a little bit of softening up before they go down with one slug. Buster. Buster Titans can be a little bit scary with Shiitake, since you can't really dispatch them in one shot, so... Better panic swap to some mines. Oh, we're gonna lose chain there, because I did not distribute my shots very well there. But that's okay. We're gonna see a lot of chain drops like that, in all likelihood, and that's gonna be a problem in later layers. That's gonna be a big problem in later layers, because we don't want to drop chain. Which means we need to be very good with our aim, which is not always possible. Well, I take that back. It's always possible. It's not always probable with me. Here we are in layer 9. On to layer 10. Green layer 10. Okay. Let's bring this back a little bit. These very wasp-heavy layers are uh, not the worst to encounter with Shiitake because their mines and their, their damage radius is just so obscene. You can liquefy an entire swarm of them in one go. And look, we just erased that uh, red Buster Titan off screen. No, not Buster, excuse me, Blaster. Off screen. With a well placed shot and a little bit of softening up from our firepower drone. For landing that uh, nice railgun slug. Sometimes you'll see me delay shooting just a little bit, just to ensure that I get the lineup I want. Because, if you miss a shot, you really don't have a lot of time to take another one before your chain drops. And that dude got caught behind the wall, so alright, rip chain again, thanks. Thanks for that. We haven't done very well at maintaining our chains so far. We've had a couple multiple hundred chains, but uh, nothing to write home about. Unfortunate. We gotta clean that up before we get to later layers. But as it stands right now, red layer 12. The game's not too per perturbed at us right now. We can kind of take our time, muddle about, do some weird and aggressive moves, all that sort of thing that we like to do in the early to early mid game. See, like I missed the shot there, and I missed the shot there. So rip chain one once again. Whoops. Now, 
That's alright. Again, we've got plenty of time to mess around. For now. Looks like folks are piling in. Hey, Kenny, a mega weapon. Ron Clee, good to see ya. Y'all are having a blast. Oops, and we dropped chain. Whilst I had my eyes shifted over just a tiny bit. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. That's okay. Okay, that was a good shot, kind of around the bend to hit that blaster on the on the back side there. Into green 13. Not terribly exciting just yet. A little bit of padding for our like 10th restarted chain. Now, what I'm kind of hesitant to say, but I'm going to say it anyways because I like to live dangerously, is that we haven't had a first down just yet. We've had lots of chain drops, but no downs. So, um, that's a thing that's happening at present. Almost, uh, did it bad to ourselves right there because <laughs> of that mine. <laughs> That's alright, we can keep this rolling. Red 13 now, very good. Our battery's actually falling a little bit more than we want it to, because we're kind of not going extremely fast. We're gonna drop chain there. Oh no, we didn't. Amazing. We almost did. It was on its way out the door, but we said, no way, hold on a second. Nearly forgot to tell you something. keep accelerate going because running around to line up these shots is just a, a little difficult. All right, so here we go with the uh, ball strats part two here, made a little bit easier by the slightly larger damage radius of Shiitake's mines over Lemon's missiles. Oh, and we nearly dunked ourselves in the corner there. Maybe four. Woohoohoo! That was a little tight. But luckily we got that accelerate out from under just as the phase ended. So there we go. That's good stuff. That's the good stuff. Oh wow! Wow, she lifted up just enough to get a to get a wasp under there. So, first down on 15 on the Vespi layer. Oopsie! And second down there because I wasn't paying attention to how far through the phase I was. Ooh, we almost took another one there. That's okay though. Just kind of powered this one out from afar though. <laughs> Whoops! Alright, so first down on 15. Um, with what almost looked like to be a, a near perfectly executed ball strat. Um, but we got a little bit too excited and uh, took that down in the final ball phase. Oh well. Oh well. Like, what are you gonna do about that? Well, you're just gonna just gonna take your licks and learn from your mistakes and come back stronger, I guess. That's, that's the best we can do. But with that out of the way, we're now two downs in because I took that extra second down, but. There, here we go. Here we go with the uh, wasp can erasures. Just walk in, pop, pop, boom. Done. Ah, I lost the chain there because I wasn't quick enough, even with the machine gun, to take down that red turret. Chain. 
just erased. I love it so much. That's why you might see me kind of hold back on the trigger before uh, going through these wasp cans. Oh wow, nothing died there. Okay, um, rip chain again, I suppose. No big deal. On to blue 17. Not super great. Not super great. That's alright, we still have a little bit of time to recover our battery and our and our speed and everything else. Ooh, with this uh, kind of treacherous mind phase, <laughs> but with the conveyor belt and everything else. Super mines all around, a couple blaster titans waiting for us. Luckily, everything is nice and open here. No walls to block our railgun shots. As long as we get a good lineup. Pound through everything at our leisure here. Alright, that dude jumped over my mind. I'm not happy about that. Like, the hitboxes on these... on these Buster Titans is just so, when they jump, that they can clear the explosion of the propeller mine, and they can also clear your railgun shot, which makes them a little bit more treacherous for Shiitake than nearly anybody else. Luckily, they don't appear en masse until about layer 31 for the Titan Gang, so we should be good dispatching them individually. Oh, that was extremely close. Took a good bop from something, and I didn't quite see what it was. Uh, that wasn't intended to be a panic swap, but it worked out as one. <laughs> that one too, in fact. Oh my goodness, um, this is a problem. <laughs> Doing a little bit too much dancing there when we didn't need to. Well, we needed to, but we didn't want to. It's usually when we start dancing we lose a lot of time just focusing on not taking a dumb down. Red layer 20. A nice dense layer if you stay towards the middle. And dense enemy sets are uh, pretty good for shiitake. So propellant mines can just clear them out. Lucky on that little rocket land there, did some chip damage against the boy in blue. Helped us out so our next railgun slug put him down.
Excuse me. There's that accelerate coming in handy. Normally that uh, mine explosion would have put me on the floor. But because accelerate negates every third bit of damage, we managed to come out with two health still left. So there we go. There's that quick evaporation of wasp hands. Excellent and cool. We'll take that shutdown because it was kind of in our way. So now we're looking. Now we're looking good. A nice 12 hundo chain. Good battery built back up. Oops. <laughs> And then a dumb pop there, so oopsie. Rip that 12 hundo chain, huh? Ah, well. Can't win them all, can you? Can't be excited about how well you do, because karma instantly kicks in. Proves you wrong. There goes two mine cans just immediately getting knocked out by a single propeller mine. Damage radius is kind of silly, but silly in our favor. One of the few things <laughs> that is silly in our favor. Necessarily want that shut down. Anything that kind of stops the enemies from moving towards us with Shiitake is uh, a little bit questionable. That's why conveyor belt layers, especially, are just not great. In the general sense, surely, of Shiitake, especially. On to justice. We might have an easier time doing the surge with him because of Shiitake's weaponry, but there's never, ever any guarantees. So if we pull this off, we'll add, what, 10 points to the, the point extension counter? So here's hoping. That'll be our first one of the event if we can do this. Bonk. All right, there's phase two. first toss out head there. Take care of that. Try to line this up appropriately. Alright, here we go. Boom! There's the surge! Alright, we got it. I had to walk around and get into position, but we did manage to pull that one off. I'm exceedingly confident that we got that one anyways. Because railgun is instant hit, pierces through everything, full damage. All right, feeling good. All right, I feel real good about calling my shot there and actually making it happen. All right, very good. We've got confirmation from the crowd. Thank you. Thank you much. I drop chain there too because nothing got hit in the interim. That's not good. <laughs> That's exceedingly not good now. We've got to stop messing around. We have to stop messing around a little bit earlier with Shiitake than other uh, androids just because of how slow she is generally. 
more drop chains means more problems. Oh, wow. Not sure what bopped me there. I'm gonna run through and knock those two turrets out there, but... Something decided to interfere with my plans. That's okay. As long as we're in a relatively enemy-dense part of the lair, we can get back to full power, no problem. Like so. Green 25. It's something, but it's not great. Better than blue 25, surely. Now we're on red 25, which is even better. getting a little spicy. Dude's tossing mines in the mix. New doggos grabbing us, green pigs trying to give us the old one-two. Said no man, no thanks. Good old casino lair. Luckily, we entered it on red. Always bet on red. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. You should always bet on black. Isn't that the uh, not the common advice? Definitely want to keep accelerate through this. Any layer with the conveyor belts accelerate is just about required. Okay, now we're gonna start seeing a lot more mine cams, which uh, our propeller mines are surprisingly good at dispatching as well. Lay one down to pop it open, and then lay another one for defense, and then they just pretty much leave you alone. Two, pop, pop. <laughs> Excellent. Of course, we always got to be careful because of our penetrating primary weapon. If there's a mine can sitting behind something else, that could be a nasty surprise if you go to uh, plan to head in and grab whatever's behind the, the robot you just liberated from this mortal coil. I'll grab that just because.
28. Everything's looking okay here. Slayer isn't actually too bad with Shiitake, because sometimes the, the turrets that drop in the northern quadrant there, between the wall and the center post, are a bit of a pain to try to get to. But, with our infinite range, infinite damage railgun, which is just one good pop and they're out of here. Ditto for the, the blue factories there. Because since their rings of bullets disappear, when they get destroyed, one good pop from the railgun will make the area a lot safer. Of course, that always relies on having good aim, which has already been established that I do not <laughs> have such an aim all the time. Pretty good. I didn't need the shutdown in the middle there. It was nice to have a little bit of safety whilst we were running. The blue turrets can be a bit of a pain. So they take a two they take two solid railgun shots to dispatch. They're just kind of just a little bit tougher than you would expect. Ditto for the jumbo doggos there. The big reds. Oh my goodness, excuse me. That is too many things to be around us at the current time. Woo! Okay. <laughs> They're really starting to dislike me now. Nice healthy chain back. That's good. Always like to see that. Whoa! Excuse me. Um. Duh! <laughs> I was thinking about things. I was thinking about what was gonna happen there. And I think I spent just a little bit too much thinking and not enough time running. So we took it down. Womp. That's okay. We've got a little bit of buildup from that previously excellent chain, so we've got something to work with. We don't want to burn it too early. We're only on 29, and things haven't yet gotten serious. tight up in there with the extra rockets cutting off any avenues of escape we may have been thinking about. Continue to fall. Not those being as grabby as they always were. That's not a thing we want to do. 
We don't want to pop two of those at once. <laughs> this is a little unexpected and scary. Oh, I just wanted to get that laser turret out of here so we could have somewhere to go. Dang it. <laughs> Dang it. Back to blue. Not good for now these uh, 30 range layers. Okay, there's our first flip of critical at 30. Not exceedingly good to see that. That's a little bit early. That's all right. We've got a potential Embryo EX fight coming up soon, which could get us a, a nice refill. That means we need to get to him first, and then we need to not be silly when we're fighting him. Luckily, Titan Gank is a little bit less dangerous with Shiitake, just because of the pure DPS she can put out. Titan gank yet. I think one more wave. Okay, here we go. I want to make sure we have <laughs> accelerate for this entertaining show here. Woo, boy. Okay, there's the the bulk of the danger has passed. Oops. Okay, luckily he shot a couple of those mimes to keep our chain going there. Whew. Okay. I think we should be good. Should be uh, hitting Embryo EX real shortly here. There it is. So another five points towards an event extension. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Fortunately, because he is a beefy boy, this is not going to be a guaranteed good Dark Embryo fight, or Embryo EX fight, rather. Maybe not this phase, maybe not the next phase, but the phase after. It's exceedingly painful. We want to see what we can maintain firepower as well. Accelerate here, not so much, because he presents a, a pretty large target regardless. But we do need to stay up in his grill to have the mines do their thing. Okay, good. There's one scary phase down. This one we will back off for, since our primary shot will do enough damage to get through it okay. Very good. Very good. Alright, do a little flip there. Ah, and then we got bopped by a rocket. Wow, those things come down much quicker than you think. Mm -hmm. Take another bop there because the spread is just brutal. Yeah, unfortunately this last phase turned into a, a real big nightmare. So not a great Embryo EX fight for us. We did get quite a good recharge on it. Not as good as it could have been. And then we end up with blue 33. So, ew and gross, but we'll try to make something happen with it. This 
especially since the first battery drop on 33 is just a super high threshold, too. So, ew. Already hit critical after the Dark Embryo refill. Not good. Um, I was about to say. Jeez, wow! <laughs> wow, okay, we do not need that near-death experience on 33. That's not good. Exceedingly not good. Mostly because I didn't have an accelerate for it. Okay. We weren't controlling the Buster Titans very well, either. Thirty-three is not fun. Didn't want that shutdown either. Luckily, these mine cans will help us out on the battery front a little bit. Not too much, though, because <clears throat> they're exceedingly dangerous. Okay, we're out of 33. Into red from 34. Of course they would put a battery in an exceedingly dangerous spot. Thanks for that. Lucky dance is there. Drop chain there because I was getting a little frightened. Goodness. <laughs> this is already getting very close and I don't like it. One of those got toasted. I could tell because he lost his little roar as he was jumping. Oh, are you serious with that? That's not good. Oh, that's a pity battery if ever I've seen one, so we're already in the hole here. That ain't good. Still in the hole a little bit. Just gotta keep fighting forward though. We can't be thinking about how bad 33 and 34 were. Kinda lucky on that battery drop. In a very dangerous spot with these two blue boys bouncing around here. some gum. Didn't have enough to swap back and dance through there. Alright, I grab that for a little bit of safety. These mine cans will be enough to repair whatever damage we've done to our battery. Goodness, which is not gonna happen. Oh, what the heck was that? Oof. Yikes, there's too many mines we are leaving unaccounted. Not good. So 
we are struggling on 35. That's not a good sign. Probably unlikely we'll be able to pull this very much further than 36, maybe 37 if we're lucky. But, gotta see it through to the end, whatever it happens to be. Hmm. It's a rather early battery, so we might be out of debt. A little soon to tell. Stop hitting me with these one-off bullets, please. Okay, I think we're out of debt. No guarantee we're gonna succeed, but <laughs> it's it's a hopeful sign. That was a dangerous move. The, the one mine mine can clear is super jank, but I kind of needed to do it <laughs> to get through everything. I had to leave that one on the field for so long. I needed to accelerate, it was headed on its way away from me. As batteries tend to do, I don't know like what the algorithm is to determine like what angle the, the, the battery pops off at, but jeez, it always seems to be to my detriment. Ooh, we might be in battery debt again. I was very, very late pop. Dicey again. Okay, it's 37. 37 red, no less. Yeah, this isn't looking great. I'd be kind of satisfied with this if we made it to curse. We got to 38 with it. Even I think that's a stretch, but it's gonna be something. Okay, there's curse. Something. Wow, that dude is bouncing that line right to me. Thanks, buddy. That coward hiding behind that wall. Come on, man. Ah, nuts. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, this is gonna be it right here, I think. We're gonna get a pity battery out of it, maybe? No, we're not even gonna get that. Oh, yeah, we are. Amazing. Okay. But that's as far as we're gonna get. I don't know if it'll have enough pity on us to let us get to 39. Okay. I really wish they would bunch up a little bit more than that. Okay. We are running on fumes. These are just pity battery after pity battery. Here we are at 39. I am shocked and surprised that it has allowed us this far. That's probably no further than that, though. Yeah, that's gonna be it. Bonk. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was kind of expected, though. Honestly.
even getting to 39 was a little bit of a miracle with how poorly that was going in the mid-30 range. But alright, let's uh, let's kick up some points here. Let's see what we got. 16. The down count. Alright, we've cracked triple digits on total down count. Uh, we did fight an Embryo EX. We got our first Justice Surge. Heck yeah. Not a victory. No follows, no subs, no more bits. Okay. That, uh, that puts a few more on the board. That gets us ever closer to 500 points to unlock round four. Huh. I take a take a small minute here to uh, to hydrate and relax because my goodness, shiitake runs put that blood pressure through the roof. Mm, mm. All right, very important to hydrate. Okay, with that, it's time for run two of the eve. But since we are between runs here, this is Infinity Drive for life, a multi-day charity stream to benefit Extra Life benefits Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. This event is going explicitly to benefit Children's Wisconsin in Wauwatosa to help out with their COVID-19 impact fund. All of your donations are going directly to them. Extra Life does not take anything off the top. Just the standard you know, credit card processing fee or whatever the heck it is. But no administrative fees or anything beyond that. So very good on Extra Life for doing that. We appreciate it. Donate.infinitydrive4.life, link at the bottom of the screen, and also an extra life donation panel below the stream there. If you're on web Twitter on a desktop PC browser, maybe it works on mobile, not sure. If you'd like to get in on the scoring contest for next round, which will be on Monday, 24th August at 7 p.m. CDT, head on over to play.infinitydrive4.life. Put up some entries, guess how these runs are gonna go. And you could walk home, well, not walk home, you're not, you're, you're, hopefully you're at home watching this right now. But, you will find yourself in possession then, of one of these two beauties, for the top two scores. Physical Assault Android Cactus Plus Switch Cartridges, in nice boxes, with trading cards, and stickers. Very cool stuff, very cool stuff. Physical prizes for the top two scores on the scoring contest. Okay, we ready for run two here? Tonight's second run is gonna be Coral. Oh. Probably our second least played Android for this round, for this mode, rather. Um, just because uh, I'm not really a big fan of her weapons. They're, they're nice and all, but just the combo of them makes it really difficult. It's not that I don't like Coral, it's just that I'm not very good at playing her. Same kind of story with Shiitake, really. Um, we do not have a Coral shirt, unfortunately, so we won't be doing any quick changes. Um, they did do a run of Coral shirts, I slept on it. I uh, did not get in while that run was going, so... And they haven't put them back up yet. So I haven't been able to get my hands on a Coral shirt, so we'll continue wearing uh, Shiitake's colors. Even though we will change the window dressing for Coral here. Bonk. Look at that. Pretty aqua, teal, bluish colors. Very cool. My favorite color, by the way, it's aqua. So. Alright, here we go. Oh, we did get another donation whilst I was jabbering about there. $25 from Firetron. Welp, we'll give money for how bad I guessed on Shiitake. <laughs> Alright. Thanks, Firetron. Appreciate it. That also puts 25 points towards uh, the event extension. So, uh... We might, keep, we might be getting close to 500, huh? Are we at 500, maybe? Let's let's do a quick add up. Let's see if my on-stream in-head math will uh, will serve. Let's see. 101 plus 20, 121, 131, 211, 221, 281, 286, 501. Holy heck! We did it. 500 points achieved, that means we have now officially unlocked round 5 for next Wednesday, August 26th at 7pm CDT. Oh yeah. That also means... That also means we've unlocked the next point threshold. So, if we get to now 900 points, that will unlock round 6 for next Friday, 28th August, 7pm CDT. We got plenty of time to do that now. We've got the rest of tonight, plus round four, plus round five. 
I believe in us. I believe in us more than I believe in me. So let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you very much, everybody, for your generosity and support. You're expecting 1,000 points. That's not quite how it went. We started with 200, right? That was our baseline. Then we bumped up to 500, so 200 plus 300 is 500. And then we bumped it up by 400, so 900. And then, you know, I'm sure that pattern has been established. You can kind of figure out what the next point threshold will be if we get to 900, but I won't spoil it. I won't spoil it. All right, enough, uh, enough jabbering about here. Let's hydrate one more time and get into second run. Get into this coral run. Let's go. Sweet, she says, as if she's expecting us to succeed. But here we go with coral. Here we go with coral. Like the other android, she has her own unique set of weapons. Her primary is this gnarly old shotgun. Look at that thing. Extremely powerful. A little bit of spread to it, but also very short range. Her secondary is this plasma shield thing, which has a couple of interesting properties to it. One, it's a one and done secondary, uh, like Aubergine's black hole, like Holly's cannonball. So no matter what, you can't really meter it out. Two, its placement is affected by conveyor belts, so as soon as this little ring starts spinning around, if we put it down on the conveyor belt, it'll travel along with it. Three, it repels enemies and bullets. So it's a good defensive weapon. So if you ever see some bullets try to, to sail into it like those dudes there. Oh, look at that! They go away! They go away and protect me. However, if the bullets originate from inside the shield, they accelerate out at a very rapid pace. I bet I'm gonna toast myself with that more than a couple times tonight. We'll just have to keep an eye on it. It's not a powerful enough shove to prevent everything from getting inside, though. Uh, mines with enough velocity behind them will still get into the shield before they're toasted. Uh, rockets ignore it entirely, so rockets from the white Fidos and the red Jumbo Fidos. We already dropped chains, we're good. Uh, Vespi's Vines ignore the shield as well. Jumping blue Buster Titans have enough speed to them where they can get inside. Um, and that's about it. Which is a, a lot of threats that the shield does not protect against. And coupled with the short range weapon that the shotgun is, pushing enemies his way is uh, kind of detrimental sometimes. But we'll, we'll try our best to, uh, to make this happen. We'll probably have a bit better of a go of this uh, than we did with Shiitake. Just gonna put that out there now. Mine phases are a little bit less problematic with Coral because of uh, the defensive nature of the shield. Except if they fall right on you. It doesn't do quite enough damage to pop them before they can land right next to you and do some damage. So we'll have to be cognizant of that. Plus, the DPS on the shield really isn't that great to begin with. A fully charged one sticks around for some time, but... Just the amount of damage it puts out isn't really very good. It won't save us from untimely things very often. But it is kind of a good set-and-forget thing. You want to protect your back as you're running to somewhere else. Just pop that thing open and hope for the best. Kind of one of the other weird effects of it is that uh, the wasps are a light enough enemy that if you pop their shield while some of them are inside, they'll get fucking ejected. Oops, excuse me. Shouldn't swear like that. They'll get uh, ejected out and go on a huge trip across the level, which is not good. Which is not good. We want to keep enemies around us so we can pop them with the shotgun. And when wasps get uh, ejected out all over the place, it makes it a little bit hard. But we'll do our best. We're already on layer six. Starting red here, that's real good. 
we've already kind of done better on layers of first down than all of the round or all of the drives in round two on Wednesday. Isn't that embarrassing? Oh, see now we're gonna yeah we're too far away to pop that thing. So rip chain. Womp. Oh well, that's how she goes sometimes. Now the shotgun is actually absolutely brutal at close range. It will do some serious work, as is witnessed by the embryo fight. Pop, pop, pop. First phase done. And it'll defend us pretty good against his uh, bullet spreads, too. But we still have to be careful. First layer down on four with Aubergine? Yeah, I know, right? Like, that's the that's the beauty of Infinity Drive. Bad things happen <laughs> to good people. And I don't know if I'd call Avi my main. She's my favorite, surely. But it's not like I play her to the exclusion of all other characters. I just think she's the most fun. Here we are, layer eight red side here. Doing good. Well, doing better. Let's say good. Good is a an awfully objective qualifier. And there's nothing objective about this run. So kind of the th key thing to do with the wasp is to is to put your shield just outside their range and then when they try to approach you they get zapped. Oh, ouch. Layer 8, because I got popped by a Blaster Titan Shockwave. So that's single-digit layer down. Oopsie. Kind of embarrassing, but oh well. Shrug and move on. Shrug and move on to blue layer 9. Boo. Now we don't have to worry about uh, first downs anymore, so now we can just play nice and loose. All the tension is gone. Nothing but perfection from here on out, right? That's how it works. That's how it works. Let's see, like that big doggo just got shoved right out of the shield. Not exactly ideal, but I think he toasted himself on his own rocket there, so we'll forgive him for that. Drop chain there. I'm going to pause actually a sec because I forgot to bring my donations list back up. Um, and it's a good opportunity to hydrate too. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, and we even got another donation in the meantime. Cool. Fifty dollars from mom. Way to go, Adam. I'm proud of you. Oh, thanks, mom. I don't know if I necessarily want feels while I'm doing this, but thank you. It's very sweet. Oh. <laughs> Dig it. Now we've got feels going with the with the coral run here. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. I very much appreciate it. That's 50 more points, by the way, towards our, our next extension at 900 points. So that's a solid chunk. Very good. So, alright, we are out of single digit layers now, to layer 11, and up to red already. So that's good. That's good and cool. I rag on Coral a lot, but it is actually really fun to play as her, too. It's just frustrating because I can't do better than what I normally do with her. <laughs> like, Obby's just pure fun to play. Ouch, did I get bopped by a rocket there? Obby's just pure fun to play, but I'm better with her than I am with Coral. So, that's really the only thing Coral's got going against her, is just I get frustrated from not being good. <laughs>
And to, to kind of the similar extent that Shiitake is really fun to play too. Like, they're all fun to play in their own regard. It's just some of them are more fun to play because I'm better with them. <laughs> that I wanted that shutdown. It's unfortunate. When you rely on the shield, or re rather, when you rely on the enemies to walk on the shield, or into the shield, rather, the shutdown is kind of counterproductive. Oh my goodness. I saw that combo of explosives, and I didn't do anything about it. I just kind of watched it roll towards me. Oops. I guess with Coral, having an Accelerate on hand is uh, a little bit more beneficial than others, just because of her very short-range weaponry. Gotta get up in some grills and start popping. Start giving a little pop-pop. And hope for the best here. Hard to do when you're extremely slow. Even harder still when there's Conveyor Belt. See, that's, that's what I was talking about with the Conveyor Belt affecting the shield. Kinda goes along with it if you pop it down there. Which can be real interesting for uh, nuking a few things along the way. But a little bit confusing if you're not ready for it to happen. caught on the wall up there. Oops. Now I'm not going to be able to get to that one on time because I mm, got caught on the wall. <laughs> Dang it. So, we're into 14 at the blue level here. That's not good. Come on, this is kind of ridiculous that we're doing so poorly this early. Okay, Vespi is a is a bit easier with Coral because you just pop that shield down and and watch the bug zapper go to work. Plus a fully powered shoddy really does a number. Oh my goodness! But of course I'm gonna dunk myself on these because these have enough velocity to them to not quite fully block them, but eject them out at weird angles. So, uh, oops. Look at those sprays of bullets just kind of sweeping over to me. Shield really is a liability sometimes. Great for wasp phases, not so much for anything else. Alright, well, kind of messed that one up. That's okay. Vespi's always a pain, regardless of who you're playing. No matter how good you think you are, Vespi will immediately prove you wrong. <laughs> Oops. So because of the sheer damage of the shotgun, Coral is excellent for score-based play as well. Surge is all over the place with the right combo of enemies. She's also very good and vaporizing wasp cans if you get the right timing on them. Like, pop them open, 
just as you're about to fire, and then boom, no more wasps. Or get the shield to pop them open for you. Or get your firepower drones to pop them open. And then, whoop, done. Really good at dispatching big titans in one go, as well. I think you can get them all with a full-powered blast. Sometimes it's hard to get enough of the shotgun pellets to land, though. Especially with the big blue boys, they scare you a bit. Or they scare me a bit. I don't know if anybody else gets scared by them, but I sure do. Oh boy, almost ran face first in that supermine. Could have been a mess. You get the blue doggos who grab you and rope you out of your own shield. Like, that's so silly. Please stop doing that. <laughs> like, they think you're, they're doing you a service or something, but it's just such an annoyance. Such an annoyance. I don't like it. Alright, so a thousand chain. Looking good. Looking real nice here. Let's keep that rolling. that battery behind it. Some dangerous stuff there, thanks. The perils of not having an accelerate to bring it over to you when you have to wade through all of that garbage. scary. Wasn't sure if I was going to be able to pop that laser before it started up. Red 19. Good layer to have red on. Well, pretty much any layer is good to have a red on. Because we'll, re we'll recap the, the layer color system a little bit here. Oops, didn't want that shut down. So anytime you take a knockdown, or when you start at the, at the very start of the game, you start on a blue layer. So the, the layer number down at the bottom center will be blue. And then you advance to green and then to red by playing well. And playing well in this case means not dropping chain and not taking downs. So when you advance up through the types of layers, there gets to be more enemies. And because battery drops depend on how many enemies you destroy, well, not exactly, depends on how much uh, white weapon energy drops from enemies, the more enemies there are, the more you're able to get batteries. So being on higher difficulty layers is really for the best. It's also responsible for getting us to fight uh, Embryo EX between layer 31 and 32 there. <laughs> 
trying to be a little bit clever about this in order to get the, the easy wasp cam nukes here. And it's a little problematic with those dudes shooting rockets, too. So if those pop the cans a little bit earlier than I'm expecting, then rip that strategy a little bit. Very good. Into red 21. Plasma shield's really good at taking care of those uh, turrets for you, so you can go do something else, considering they're stationary. Ah, oh, nice even 2000 chain, and we dropped it because those two mines were frozen over there. Yikes, when shut down becomes a liability. Ah well, got plenty of time to get a better chain, huh? Not even halfway through here. Oh, it's so slow trying to dispatch these if you can't do them fast. Oh, is the battery on the conveyor belt? It surely is. And it's behind a wall, too. <laughs> Dang it. Ugh. So silly sometimes. Through the wall. No, not quite. Not quite large enough for that. Although he did sort of eat it there. I don't know what happens. And why he just suddenly decided to, eh, I'm done with this. Okay, on to justice. Should be a, a pretty rapid fight, just based on the monstrous amount of DPS Coral can put out. Like so. Bit of a lucky go of things there, actually. Okay, we're going to try to meter this out a little bit. Oh, did we get it that time? That was a little bit harder to see. I think we did because we're at nearly 20 million. That's kind of my score indicator for that. I don't know, can the crowd confirm again if that was a surge? Dang it. I'm pretty sure it was. Oh, mm, excuse me. It's kind of a silly dunk to take right in the beginning of 24 there. I got broke by a doggo and then blowed up. Was it a surge? Thank you. Thank you very much. Confirm. We will take those 10 points closer to another event extension. Boy, howdy. Two for two on the surges tonight. It's going to be a little rougher in the third run, but we'll do our best to make it three for three. So I think my score was like, what, 16 million before the surge? And then nearly 20 afterwards. So missing that surge pretty much means, well, GG, well played, if you're going for a score run. 
But since we're really just aiming for survival, it's not a big deal if we miss it. But I'm glad we got it all the same. It's one of those, well, on principle, this is nice to have. That doesn't line up quite as nicely very often. That double wasp can evaporation is so slick. Pop both at once with the shield and then one single shotgun slug. Take care of the rest. Kind of annoying because the blue Buster Titans can jump over the shotgun spread as well. We've got so many ups to them. They can't quite clear the shield though. <clears throat> so if they jump over that, they'll at least take a little bit of damage. Not nearly enough as you would hope, but it's something. We're in a much battery position, much better battery position here with Coral than we were with Shitake. It's 100% expected. Ooh, ouch. A little bop there. take the shutdown in the middle of that maelstrom. It's because I knew all those mines were going to pop eventually. I didn't want to be any party to them when they were around. Ooh, sir, excuse me. You dragged me out of my own shield. Red 28 with a nice healthy 1180 chain. <laughs> Almost was the harbinger of my own demise there. Liability of the shield, pushing that spread of bullets along with me. Luckily we saw, we adjusted, four things went south.
I'm gonna be real embarrassed if, by some miracle, and this depends on us being able to clear it here, if by some miracle this ends up being my top scoring Infinity Drive, like my PB. Because we did get the Justice Surge, and that's a pretty good step towards making that happen. But it's gonna rely on us not taking a whole bunch of dunks in the end game. Because I rather like my current PB. <laughs> I don't want to put a Coral PB on the board, that would be silly. That would be silly and embarrassing for me. Want that shutdown necessarily? It's kind of, kind of a silly place to have that because we weren't in danger, and it's not layers 40 to 49 yet. If I were really aiming to set a new score PB, I'd be focused more on surging. But honestly, I'm just focused on going faster so we can <clears throat> get a nice buffer of battery before we hit the 30s. I'll grab it because it was in the way and I wasn't sure where that mine can was going to pop into. Double firepower grab, that's not necessarily good. I mean, it'll stack them up real nice if we were empty, but it just feels bad to grab something in quick succession like that. Oh, really? Didn't even see that one. I knew they were popping off from that big red doggo. I expect that one to be there, though. That's kind of silly. So, rip that nearly 2,000 chain again. We're running out of time to uh, do a better chain than that. Now that we in the 30s. That double shutdown, yuck. Yeah, uh. Back down to blue layer 30 we went, and then we're already back up to green 30. Good, good. Just barely got the turret involved in that one. Nice. Oh, and I still got zapped by it. Boo! <laughs> oh no. Back to blue 30 we go. Luckily losing weapon energy with Coral isn't as bad as most other androids. Cause even her 
Level 0 and level 1 shotgun does a fairly good amount of damage per shot. Enough to clear small groups of the tiny ones and then do a, a, a good old number on the big ones. But alright, we're coming up on another opportunity for Embryo Yex as well. As soon as Titan Gank shows up, then we'll be down to party. job tough by spreading those bullets out on my own. Not yet. One more wave to Titan King, I think. I always call it a little bit too early, I think. Because it just feels like there's so many titans in this lair overall, even outside Titan Gank. Well, we are really playing with fire on that. Luckily, that big red doggo blocked that laser just long enough for us to get away. Alright, here comes Titan Gank. Let's go. Let's ride. We're going to take a coward shutdown. <laughs> the coward shutdown. Because some of those dudes can be awful scary. Especially when they jump, bunch up and start jumping each other over. Oh, bzz, nope. No Embryo EX this time. Got zapped before the layer transitioned to 32. So we're going to be dealing with a normal 32. Probably blue, based on how late in the phase we got hit there. Yep. Yuck. Yuck and disgusting what happened there. Mm, so now we're gonna be dealing with the rest of this without the battery recharge from Embryo EX. That makes things problematic. We can still do this, like we've we've done it plenty of times. We've had plenty of clears when we haven't had an Embryo EX fight. I just don't like it. I don't like this conveyor belt. Why am I always fighting against it? It seems no matter which way it's turning, I'm always going the opposite direction some really bad instinct or something. silly. Especially a shutdown right as that wasp can burst open. So not only are they spreading out, but they're spreading out without making their own attempts to come back to me. Double kick in the pants. Good battery recovery there, though. They pop nice and close to me. Oops. <laughs> Those, however, should not pop nice and close to me. It's a little bit different. So, alright. Not a good end to that 33.
Okay, we're nearly out of critical. Which is not extremely frequent for 34. Scary. Ah, oh, dang it. And a normal dude knocked me out. Are you kidding me? Oi. Concentrate on so many things at once, and then you get boffed by the least threatening thing in the group. up there. Fortunately, we really don't have good anti-air. <laughs> like, none of the androids have good anti-air weapons. Like, at all. <sighs> Drop chain there, because I couldn't get to him fast enough. The rocket's dropping down. Problematic. Dragging me into rocket fire. Okay, good. Lost one power up there, that's alright. We've got a pretty good store of them by now, I think. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get over to him before he teleported and dropped chain anyways. That's not good. Blue 36 is a small problem. Oh man, they burst right on top of me. This is also a small problem. Come on! Well, this is becoming a, a bigger problem now. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, help? It's gonna take a heck of a run back. Oh boy, that's not looking good. We're gonna get a pity battery out of that one. Shoot. Dudes are so spread out now. Would you drop more than one at a time, please? Oh, for fudge's sake. Yeah, good. Um, I think we're probably done here. So we get a patter pity battery out of one of these dudes. Okay. This isn't looking good. Extremely poor showing. Oh, not shut down. I need that shut down. Be lucky to get another pity battery out of this. We're not. We're gonna eat it at 36. Oof, uh, that's rough. That's real rough. But not entirely unexpected. 
Like Coral is a is a rough android to play. I'm just a little android. If you end up taking loads of downs, like I took maybe six downs on 36 and 35 combined, like a good portion of our total I'm down count there. Oops. Well, all right, let's tick up those numbers then. So one one plus one six or plus sixteen is one seventeen there. Not fight at Embryo EX. We did get another surge though. Not a victory, unfortunately. Okay, good there. Well, I'm happy to put the coral run behind us, at the very least, because <laughs> that was a very silly, very very silly run. Um, but now. Oh. Now we can move on to run three on the eve. One of one of probably my more fun runs to do with good old peanut. Good old peanut. Very striking orange color. Speaking of, let me get changed real quick. Look away. Look away, look away if you get squeamish. Easily. Yeah. We'll trade out the shiitake brown for this nice, bold, sharp orange. The orangest shirt in my possession. <laughs> but it's so cool. It's like all these shirts are great. Super good designs, bold colors, striking lines. Yeah, that's a good shirt. That's a good peanut shirt right there, I'll tell you what. Alright. Let's get the window dressing to match. Window dressing to match for old peanut. Old peanut. Okay. So we're good for a recap here. This is Infinity Drive for Life. Multi-day charity stream benefiting Extra Life, which benefits children's hospitals, excuse me, children's miracle network hospitals. I say that so often, I sometimes forget. Which for this event will be benefiting Children's Wisconsin in Wauwatosa, their COVID-19 impact fund. Very important and good cause to deal with that nasty pandemic that's raging out there in every way that we can. Since it's especially harsh in the US for Extremely silly reasons, but we don't need to go into those right now. We've got a third run to do tonight A third run and then we can put this to bed for the eve Let's get started with peanut my goodness I'm looking forward to this because this is a it's an exceptionally fun run with peanut because of her weirdo weapons That's probably what makes the uh, aubergine run so fun as well. So let's go Let's go, let's go, let's go. Time to waste here. All right, let's go. All right, so Peanut's unique weapons are a little Megma Cannon here that leaves stuff on the ground that still does damage if enemies walk over it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. We got some Splatoon action up in here. Anybody play Splatoon? Anybody play Splatoon? I don't. But I've heard it's very similar. Like they took a few keys from the assault android cactus here. And her secondary weapon is that big old drill she's carrying over on her back. Bonk! There's the drill. What's fun about that is... If you rush into a big enemy with it, you carry it along with you, and every enemy you smash into whilst you're carrying that big enemy takes a huge amount of damage. It's great. Also, you can do this. Whee! Oh, I couldn't do that because I caught that enemy. Let's try that again. Whee! <laughs> we can also do that. I'll, uh, I'll sacrifice my, my low chain for that little demonstration. That's fun. You can do the infinite spin around the outer edge of the arena here. It's not useful, but it looks cool. It looks cool and fun. I guess it's good for transport purposes if you need to get to the opposite side in a hurry. But I don't think I've ever used it for a practical purpose. So in a speed sense, Peanut is one of the faster androids. Because you can pile on the magma 
onto the floor, and then when enemies spawn and walk over it, they take a whole bunch of damage. You can really clean up real quickly if you can successfully predict where the enemies are coming from. I need that shutdown, just kind of appeared in my way. That's really a neat mechanic. Really sets uh, Peanut apart from ye old standard shooty androids. Not to cast dispersions upon someone like Cactus, however, but it's just a, a fun and unique thing. Powered magma cannon is really pretty solid DPS. But you won't see me swapping too often. If I can just get up in the grill and get my face full of magma, you know? Does the job exceedingly well. Mine layers or mine waves aren't really too difficult to deal with. You just put down some magma, they run into it, and kaboom, you're safe mostly. So layer 5, layer 6 will not be extremely problematic. We'll just set down a little bit of defensive magma. Nice, there we go. What happened there was we drilled into the first big dude. He ate it on the way over to the second, and then we immediately grabbed into the second big dude. Very effective. One might even say super effective. Oh, oh. The shutdown I wanted necessarily, but it could have been worse. Let's see what mines pop before they have a have a chance to even get over to us. Which is super good. Unfortunately, some of the magma buildup does kind of obscure the targeting reticles of the rockets. We'll just have to be aware of that. Mm. Also have to be aware of the short-ish range of the magma flow. So that's going to cause a few unnecessary chain drops. Embryo. Embryo, first form. Boom. <laughs> Phase one done. The drill really does do a, a lot of damage to a heavy target like this. Pretty incredible. Plus we can kind of prepare for the next phase by dumping a whole bunch of magma down. That was a very fast phase four. <laughs> See ya, Embryo. You tried. Not very hard, but you tried. Oh, why'd we lose chain there? That was silly. Big red should have been done. Why does he even show up for work? I mean, if he's still drawing a paycheck, good on him for showing up at least. Like, he's got the whole Milton thing going on. I think nobody ever told him he was fired. And through some glitch in accounting, he's still getting paid. So whatever, like, it's show up, put face into floor, and get paid, I guess. Red layer 9. Doing okay here. I think we're going to hit double digits before first down, which is passively good for this evening. Uh, 
but as much as we can pump those numbers up, the better it'll be. Don't want to drill into mines. Drilling into mines is a bad time. You can drill into mine cans though, that's kind of fun and scary. Also exciting. Double kill with that big red. Sometimes it's not even worth the trouble drilling into them. Because even though they're pretty much guaranteed to eat it as soon as you hit a wall, with the drill in their front or their back or their side or whatever, sometimes it can take more time than it's worth. And in a mode where going fast equals more batteries so you can survive longer, that time is very much of the essence. And you can drag him along and hit other uh, enemies with him, though. That makes it kind of work. And it looks cool. Like sometimes it's about style. More than it is about function. Not very often, but sometimes. Oh, lost that power up. I forgot it was going to do a post on 12. Kind of the key thing about drilling into an enemy, though, is that you turn white. And when you turn white, you're invincible. Just like when you get up from a down or grab a shutdown or weapon swap. You're invincible as long as your drill is stuck in an enemy. Which is an exceedingly long time sometimes. So you can really exploit that a little bit. If things get a little dangerous and there's a bunch of big boys around you, just whip out your drill. Stick it in a back or something, and then you're safe. It's right there. That wasn't very good. You're not invincible as you're just using the drill plane, like so. But as soon as it gets into an enemy, then you're good. So rip that chain, and that was also first down on 12 here, I believe, right? So not awful, but not super good, either. Mm. Hate the rotating walls. So bad. Stuff gets stuck behind him, and you drop chain as you're going, chasing him down, and ugh. Like, come on. Come on, man. Isn't this game hard enough? Why do we need rotating walls? No one needs the rotating walls. Like, what purpose does this serve? Who decided this was a good aesthetic? I guess it'd be kind of cool to have, like, a, a giant rotating wall in the house. That'd be Kind of sick, actually. Hmm. Maybe I'm coming around on the rotating ones. Kind of the weird part about the magma is that even though it sticks to the floor like you saw there, it doesn't travel with the conveyor belt. And so it just looks a little funky. Whatever. Usually you don't have a lot of time to think about it. You just kind of shrug and say, eh, good game logic. Oh, it's Vespi already. Vespi with a fully powered up Hina. Easy peasy. Like, look. Rip phase one. 
rip phase two. Throw down a bunch of magma so all the wops just totally vaporize. Rip phase three. Rip phase four. Rip phase five. <laughs> Such a silly amount of damage. And rip phase six. Easy peasy Vespi fight. Probably one of the easier ones. Perhaps even the easiest of them all. Just a soft touch through and through. There, we almost dropped chain because we didn't destroy the dude we were drilling into. And we didn't do enough damage by dragging him along to destroy the, the Ghost Reaper dude either. So that might have been more beneficial to just not drill at all and just huck some magma and be done with it. We did not calculate that appropriately that time. Carrying the dudes into a super mine and watching them evaporate immediately. Disappear because of the inner ring there. I'm surprised we got a, a turret spawn on the center. Usually that wall pops quick enough where it doesn't get a chance to do that. Very interesting. One of the interesting little perks of the of the enemy spawns here. I guess we haven't really talked about this at all, but it might seem like we're we're fighting random stuff every now and again. But the truth of the matter is there is no RNG or or randomness at all in this game. Like, the closest thing to random is a different, uh, different game mode that we won't see in the event, but there's no randomness at all. Like, all the enemy spawns are fixed, all the waves are fixed. There are different sets of spawns because, of, you know, blue layer, green layer, red layer, and all that, but everything else is totally deterministic. So if you knew how to move perfectly, you know, frame by frame, pixel by pixel, whatever, you can manipulate the exact same stuff every time. It's incredible. Like, I, I, it blew my mind when I was told that. Like, I, there's no way it could be like that. And it's like, no, it's that's it. Like, wow, that's pretty cool. The fact that there's so much variation in this without, like, relying on what would be typically considered randomness is, is pretty cool. It's a neat little tech thing. So wild. Like, yeah, maybe you could manipulate it. Maybe you could make a task. I think there has been a, an attempt at a task to be made. But there's so many, like, different variations of it to, to take it into account that it's really problematic. <laughs> it's, it's really a lot of work. I think Transparent Blue did try to make a dance once or twice, but he only got so far with it because there's just so much. So much frame by frame and adjusting your angle and which way you're moving and what you're shooting at and all that. It's just, it's a mess, but also super cool. Ooh, 
That was a very silly move that we almost took it down to. So with that said, like, the ability to manipulate this stuff, you'd think that'd be pretty important to, like, guaranteeing a win or guaranteeing a quick run or something. And it's like, yeah, that's all well and good. I could try to do more of that, but it's not as fun if you try to do that, honestly. I am H's of O's. It's not as fun to do it like that. It's much more fun to just play by the seat of your, seat of your britches or whatever lower coverings you happen to be wearing, if any. Like, I ain't gonna judge if you, if you play uh, in the buff. How do you know I'm not playing in the buff right now, from the waist down? You can't know. It's the beauty. It's the beauty of the stream. I'm not playing in the buff, just a point of fact, but if I were, you wouldn't know. Accelerate on the way through. It looked like it sped up my drill, but I think I had gotten a dude I had speared nuked, so then I sped up a little. that first wave of incomings there. That's unfortunate. Kinda hoping for it. If I grab a silly shutdown like that, at the very least it could do is do some work for me on the next set of enemies. But not that time, apparently. Doggos, please. I don't need those shutdowns, though. That's kind of worthless to me. A real silly down on 21 to get us to blue 22 here. Not, not ideal and not fun. back to red 22 pretty shortly. Alright, here's our chance for three of three justice surges on the night. No guarantees, because it's exceedingly difficult to do with Peanut, just because of the nature of her weapons. Like, their best chance is probably going to be drilling into his final head that he throws right next to him while he's at very low health. Like, with Shiitake, we could line it up from pretty much anywhere because of her super sick railgun. But with this, it's going to be a bit of a problem. We'll do a little bit more. Uh, nope, that's not going to do it. He lasered his own head. Well, alright. Two of three on the night ain't bad, I guess. Doggo, please, stop, <laughs> stop tethering me while I'm trying to drill away. Like, please, it's the most annoying thing. Tethers when you're trying to slash away with licorice. Tethers when you're trying to drill away with peanut. Ugh, just the worst. Just the worst. But luckily we didn't take a silly down there this time, so. Womp womp. 
We're actually not too far off on score either, despite missing the surge. We had what, about an extra 800k at this point with Shiitake and Coral? Roughly there, Boots. So we're not really down that much, but that doesn't m really mean anything. <laughs> because we've still got half the run to do. Woo! Alright, well, we got through a fair few more of those than I expected. So the combined invincibility time with both the drill and the swap back to the weapon means I can... Almost, I'm almost guaranteed to avoid getting bopped by a, a Buster Titan like that. Almost guaranteed. I'm not sure it's 100%, but it's pretty darn close. Wow, I actually ran straight into that laser. But through the miracle of the accelerate, we made it out. Ah, that's some gum. Another silly chain drop, because I did not focus down one of those blasters. Before I move down to the next. Very silly move on my part. I'll accept responsibility. Just feels bad is all. Casino Lair Part 3, Act 3. Now with equally more conveyor belts. Yeesh. At least like before we're headed into 26 at the red layer here. That's real good. More enemies, more weapon energy, more batteries. More of everything that a growing android needs. Mind defense there. Pretty good battery levels for twenty eight now. Oh, 
always be doing better. Keep grabbing those quickly. So they can get off the field and keep us rolling towards new ones. Didn't know if I was going to be able to sneak by that explosion or not. The answer clearly is no. <laughs> I was not able to do such a thing. So back down to blue 28. Unfortunate. We're getting to that point where uh, we got to stop doing that. If we have any hope of getting any sort of distance here. <laughs> a little robot shield there to drill into the laser boy. Fun and cool. Looks neat as well. stationary there. Unfortunately, none of Peanut's weapons really have the range or the utility to fire and forget. Like Holly's Cannonball or Coral's Plasma Shield, Take's Propeller Mines, Obvious Singularity, anything like that. So it makes getting those turrets off the center island there a little bit more important. I saw that rocket coming in. I figured I could slip by it, but I was incorrect yet again. Alright, that's enough of this. That's a lot of big dudes that I do not want to have to deal with. Always be better. Not making silly double shutdown grabs or exceedingly more silly chain drops. Like that kind of better. Too many close calls there. Let's clean this up.
That was a, a plan that double through there. I was hoping Blue Spectre would eat it before we got to the factory. And that's exactly what happened. So like one accidentally good plan. Well, not accidentally good plan. One intentionally good plan out of so many accidental ones. Lost in a sea of bad plans. <laughs> Or no plans at all, really. Well, of course I'm gonna lose chain there, because the only dude left is a big red doggo. Ugh. Blue 31. Well, at least we'll be coming up on our Titan gank soon, which will determine if we Fight Embryo EX one more time tonight. Just a little blip of critical at 31 here. That's not great, but not awful. Taking turns jumping each other over to me. Dislike it so much. It means they can move so much faster. Oh, looks like I'm gonna drop chain there. Cause that dude got caught on the wall. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> Alright, so no Embryo EX fight this time either. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. It's so annoying. Can't navigate his way out of a paper bag. I swear. We'll just have to play extra good to get our battery back without the recharge from Embryo EX here. No problem, right? No problem. we sandbagging up until now. So now we remove the power limiters and, and do this full force, right? That's how it goes. Tunnel through those two mine, or not mine cans, wasp cans with that big dude. Takes care of most of them. That's pretty much the, the fastest strat we got with Peanut for dealing with those big cans. through that to grab that shutdown. So there's no way I was getting through there otherwise. Shoot! Of course there was another can right behind me! Oi! Come on. I'm trying to play this good and I can't because the spawns are messing with me. Dang it, so now we're up to blue 34, which is, uh, problematic. It's because we were floating with a, a pretty good battery, and now we're just kind of hanging in there again. There's just one dude that doesn't make it over for some reason.
back up to red 34. So we're we're not out of this yet. It's just very very close. Still got the approach to curse and then curse and then post curse and then the forties. As long as we can keep reds all the way through, we'll have a good go of things. Accelerating on the batteries, which is good. Get a little bit closer each time. Keep away from the pity zone. out of critical there. Good fast cleanup on the big dudes. Transition to the red 36. Very strong. Excellent. We might start burning our power up stash a little bit early because there's no point to keeping them around if we're not going to make it to the final bits. So we may as well use them while they're useful. Good, we're staying out of the critical range. It's pretty impressive for 36. Usually we'd be fighting battery to battery here. Looks like we've kind of tamed this down back a little bit. Nice. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling like that. It's real good. Good timing on that turret kill. If he had busted just a little bit later, we would have been past it. It would have been no go. Okay, we're gonna hit a little bit of critical there. The battery should be forthcoming. Excellent. Excellent 37, so we're headed into full red 38. We should have a battery popping soon. Thank you. That's still a little stodgy, so we're not out of this yet. Nice double grab on the Titans. Grab that shutdown because that was a little scary. Okay, 
we're losing on this, which is mm, a little bit weird considering how strong we came into 38. But that's why they call 38 the curse, because it just toasts you no matter how well you do before or after. All right, there we go. We're through the curse with a relatively good start, and then I get toasted by that wave already. So, now not good. <laughs> now not good. Now we're headed into pity battery territory, probably. I don't know that we would have done that fast enough to get out of this now. So now it's going to be stodgy through and through. Pity battery to pity battery, probably. alive for a bit so they can do some damage for us, but very dangerous. Good shutdown grab there because of that northernmost turret. Pain in the butt to focus it down without. at least make it to 40s this time. We're not through it yet. <laughs> that was a dangerous go getting so close to that. Okay, to the 40s. I'm surprised we battled back through that. But here we go. Here we go, let's go. A kingdom for a shutdown or 10. Never ever drill through mine cans, what am I thinking? Where's, where's the last dude? Oh, no. Oh, that's bad. Drop chain right at the transition to 43. Uh-oh. It's going to be a small problem, but we can still battle through it. quickly as he's hoping. Doggo! Oh no. Now we're in real bad shape. We're gonna need a couple pity batteries out of this to, to make it happen. There's one. This is going to be real dicey now. 
dicier than it needs to be. I think I didn't drill all the way through, I would have missed that battery. to drop a battery. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness. This is very tense now. Um. Oh dear. Wow. Scooping that one out. are we? <laughs> Where the heck was the battery there? Oh my goodness. That's a tease and a half. <laughs> oh no, 49. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> That's super terrible! Oh no! Ah, oh, we got totally worked over by the bad battery drops at the end. Oh well. Count them up. Count them up. 123 downs now. Uh, no Embraer EX fight that time, no surge, no victory, no nothing else. Womp. Oof. Well, that's... unfortunate. I was really hoping for a win to, to seal up the night here, but I guess that's not gonna happen. <laughs> poop poop a dupe. All right, well, that'll do it for tonight, I guess. Um, unfortunate, unfortunate. I'm disappointed and, and kind of down about that one. But that's okay because this is not the end of Infinity Drive for Life. We've got two bonus rounds coming up, and the possibility of unlocking a third if we get to 900 points. Because right now we're sitting at. Let's see. Let's do some more math. 123, 143, 163, 243, 253, 313, 318 plus 265 is 565, 575 plus 13 would be 588. If, I, if I'm mathing correctly, 588 out of 900 to unlock the next round. Um, which would be round six next Friday, 28th of August. Uh, as it stands right now, however, our next round of this will be this coming Monday, 24th August, 7 p.m. CDT. We've already generated a new, fresh set of nine, sequence of nine, to determine our next sets of androids for the next three rounds. Two rounds for sure, the third pending, pending an unlock. Um, so next week then, Next week, Monday, round four will be Aubergine, Cactus, and Lemon. Of course, obviously, androids we've already seen. We've already played through all nine now after tonight. But, oh boy, Aubergine, Cactus, and Lemon. That's a strong trio. Um, I hope for at least one win out of those. My goodness, that would be embarrassing if we got none. Like tonight. Yeesh. Um, but that's what's coming up on round four. Round five, I will have to look up, though. Um... I don't have that on me right now, but that sequence is already ready to go. So, with that, that's it for tonight. I'm going to put up the scores. I'm going to unlock uh, round five's runs. That'll be 13 through 15 for score submissions. And then we will be back here on Monday. So again, this is Infinity Drive for Life, a multi-day charity stream benefiting Extra Life, which benefits Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, in this case for Children's Wisconsin in Wauwatosa. Helping out with their COVID-19 impact fund. We've raised $265 already. Thank you very much, everybody, for your generosity. We've got two more nights at the very least guaranteed. Um, with a third one. With another one. Well, that'll be bring it up. Bring the total up to six if we unlock it with 900 point tips. But with that, 
let's call it an evening. Thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you on Monday. Bye-bye.